Now it's time for my old school or my old school. I don't really know where the emphasis lies, but Robbie, what do you think? Yes, I was reading it as my old school. I think um, in the case of many documentaries, if the subject refuses to appear on camera, that's basically fatal. (laughs) Weirdly, in the case of my old school... It's the making of it. It's brilliant! This is a talking heads piece about a Scottish hoaxer who is known as Brandon Lee, uh, who in 1993 inveigled his way uh, under false pretenses uh, into a place in the fifth year at Bearstown Academy in Glasgow. And the director, John McLeod, was a classmate of his. Now, the precise nature of this hoax it's it's alluded to very early in the film. Uh, it, it's immediately suggested what's going on when he he kind of when Brandon enters the classroom in the first instance, his uh, fellow pupils as initially assume that he's a teaching assistant, but then he goes to sit down on a desk beside them. But and they, he's wearing a school uniform. Yes, right, and also quite an old fashioned school uniform <laughs> as well. So not the kind of nineties uh, Scottish school uniform of the time, which was like an eclipse puffer jacket. That was my <laughs> era. I saw myself on this. I mean, this was. I'm so Sheer glad it's here. you reviewing this. Yes. Um, but no, he he very much looked like um, someone who had dressed as a school pupil rather than someone who had just turned up uh, to, to school. Um, and here is a, a clip of um, that, that, that has a, people recollecting what Brandon was like in class. Now, Gary, can you tell me the medical term for what I'm pointing at here? Uh, it's a wally, miss. Uh. It became a bit of a running joke because as soon as there was a question that nobody could answer, everybody's attention just turned to Brandon. Said, Brandon, do you know? Of course, 10 out of 10 times, he always knew. He always knew the answer. Well, miss, your finger's on the bulbourethral gland. It's otherwise known as Cowper's gland after the anatomist William Cowper. As I remember she said, sometimes Brandon teaches me biology. You know, Brandon, sometimes you teach me biology. I thought, oh, I'm getting somewhere. This is good. This is a good report. Visually, this film is so interesting because they have this brilliant cartoonist who has reenacted all of these past scenes. Yes, in- and it's in the style of the Grange Hill comic strip <laughs> from the theme tune, which is, of course, contemporaneous with that, that period. But in this brilliant concession to the Scottish setting, the sausage that flies through the canteen on the end of a fork is not an English banger but a square of Lauren sausage. And again, you know, I would you know, never this, this, have this, noticed that detail. That's brilliant. Exactly. This is maybe why I'm here this week, in fact. Um, <laughs> so yes, the hoax was uncovered in, in 1995. It was this brief uh, scandal in the press. Brandon gave interviews on breakfast television at the time. I have to say, this story would be treated very differently if it broke today. 100%. And we keep saying hoax, but actually that feels so much more whimsical. Yes. It is a very whimsical yes. film, but he the idea of a hoax, he wasn't really trying to pull a prank on anyone. He was doing this purely for his own ends. Yes, that's right. That's right. And um, so anyway, um, he's Brandon, despite wanting to do all these interviews at the time, is less keen to explain himself in person now. So um, the director, uh, John McLeod's compromise that he's come up with is that he records an audio interview only uh, with Brandon and then has um, this dramatised by Alan Cumming, who silently lip syncs along to the tape of the interview, sitting at a desk in a classroom in costume as the adult Brandon Lee. Now, this is so, this is great for two reasons. The first is that it writes this historical wrong because at one point coming, this was years ago, was attached to play Brandon Lee mm. in a fictionalised feature version of the story. But the second reason, it, and, and which is absolutely crucial to the success of the film, is that it absolutely f- puts front and centre this idea of imposture. You know, someone is pretending to be someone who they are not. And it's not as simple as just watching an actor playing a role. It's like you're watching someone, words being ventriloquised through them. And the puppet master himself is kind of tucked out of sight. And that disconnect between appearance and truth is absolutely at the core of what's going on here. So for the most part of the film, you have the former classmates talking about, you know, their recollections of the story and how strange and crazy it was. And, and then when the, when the truth came out, you know, how they all reacted. Um, and the, it's, it's funny in the way that listening to people reminisce about their school days often is. I think that was my favourite bit, actually, just seeing people interact with each other that they used to go to school with. We don't know if they're still best friends or not. They certainly gave the impression that they were all really, really close, yes, which was yes. lovely. There was that kind of classroom camaraderie, I think, comes across. Absolutely. You could see them interviews. as children. And the um, as well as the talismanic presence of this Lauren sausage flying through the air, you also <laughs> have Claire Grogan 
aka Susan from Gregory's Girl, giving the, the, the voice of one of the teachers in the animated sequences. Oh so it's goodness. very much kind of tapping into this kind of tradition of Scottish secondary schooling mm. and, you know, um, harking back to that fondly. However, later on in the film, it does something that I absolutely love, which is that it starts to question the recollection of the pupils themselves. Mm. And this version of the true story to which they have reconciled themselves over the course of the last couple of decades also turns out to have holes in it. Yes. And this is where the, the the film starts to question the way that, you you know, you can take a story and something very elaborate and strange that you were tangled up in much earlier in your life and you tell yourself stories about that story that aren't the whole truth in a way to kind of be at peace with it. So one of the issues is the chronology. People are keen to give Brandon an excuse for what he did. So they move around the events of his life subconsciously to kind of make it make sense. Complicity as well. Was he acting alone? Well, it's much kind of easier to understand if, yes, he was just some kind of oddball who who did what he did because it was what he did. But actually, that's not the whole truth as well. Best of all, there is this incident involving a school production of South Pacific, which insanely uh, he put himself forward for and was cast in the role of Lieutenant Cable. Yes. Um, and so he's, you know, he... Brandon in his interview talks about hiding in plain sight yeah. but the pupils have this and also the staff because there's two teachers at the time who are interviewed as well they have a recollection of how this play went down and it is not how the play went down and, and we know a certain this because moment, it's because on they have a video they have, camera yes, they have which is video, and, fantastic and evidence so, so McLeod makes his interviewees watch this video and their reactions to it not being the way they remember it and one pupil in particular, and if I say more, it kind of will spoil why, but one pupil in particular, their reaction to this is the reason to make this film. And look, it's not kind of Abbas Kiristami, you know, it's not kind of deconstructing reality and identity in, in, in that kind of incredibly intellectualized way, but it's kind of on the same path. And, and, and crucially, it's not pulling a trick on the audience, right? It's, it's, it's allowing us to discover this stuff at the same speed as, mm. as the interviewees. Um, I think there are times at which the film labours the ironies a little bit. There's a passage where it goes back and says, you know, oh, wasn't it ironic when? Wasn't it ironic when? And you kind of like, yes, oh, we, we sort of got this the first time round. We didn't need this extra stuff. Um, but it tells this weird story very grippingly and entertainingly. And as I say, the moment when the true story turns out not to be true as well is the kind of stuff that jangles around in your head for months. I, felt, I was hugely impressed. By yes, it. the first kind of 20 minutes, I, was, I thought it was brilliant. And then I did think it dipped rather. It was, I think, maybe 20 minutes too long, this film. And then the last 20 minutes was fantastic. And also, just stay for the credits. And for Lulu as Lulu, well. Lulu, yes. Lulu, who voices the deputy head. Yes. And, and recorded sings. a theme song. I mean, I love it. I That's love Lulu. We're going to talk a little bit more later about the genre that it lies in. But for now, it's time for What's On Now. Thanks for watching this video. We hope you like watching it as much as we enjoyed recording it. Why not check out these videos while you're here? Uh, to be up to date on all things Kermit and Mayo's take, follow us on our socials. They're all here below. I mean, why wouldn't you? I would, in fact. Yes, so did I. Yeah.